This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. My name's Dan. I'm 45 years old just recently, and I'm an alcoholic. See ya. I love beer. It doesn't matter what kind it is. My favorite beer is an open one. He will drink until he either passes out or they're all gone and he's out of money. With $300, he can be drunk for days, and then that's when the sickness of the addiction really sinks in. Gosh golly, holy jumping. <laughs> <laughs> Dan and I were pretty close growing up. He was a good older brother. I liked hanging out with Dan. As a kid, he was somewhat of the golden child. He was good at everything he did. He excelled in sports, soccer, hockey, track. Dad believed that Dan was on his way to be a successful professional hockey player. He would stay at practices, sometimes yell, give Dan crap if he didn't give it his all. I tried so hard. I did care about what he thought. Dad had a lot of expectations, and expectations became too much, and Dan struggled. He felt pressured to score a lot of goals, to be the captain. Playing hockey was supposed to be fun, but it wasn't. He put a lot of money, a lot of effort into driving me to games and everything, but he drank. My dad would be the drunk guy in the stands. Dad was an alcoholic, there's no doubt about that. You know, we go to school in the morning, you get home from school, and there's drinking, there's drinking, there's drinking all the time. He'd had multiple heart attacks, could you bypass heart surgery, and retired at 37, 38 years old, so it was a, a medical retirement. He worked in a factory. He was sole provider of the house, and so probably was really tough to be told you can't work anymore. A lot of times, my mom took off with my two sisters and my brother, and I stayed back because I didn't want my dad to wake up uh, by himself. Dan and my dad had a very love-hate relationship. He loved my dad very much, but he hated my dad's drinking. Sometimes it would get physical. When I would go over to Dan's house, his mom and dad, you, you could just feel the tension in that house as soon as you walked in. His mom was very cold, so most often Dan would come to my house. When Dan and I started dating, he was just tall, dark, and handsome to me. A definite good catch. At that same time, Dan kind of lost focus with sports and that, I think his focus became me. One time, Dan and I went for a walk and we were late coming back, I guess, for practice. And his dad chased him down the road with his shovel. He's like, you're gonna be late for practice. He literally wants to hit me with it. He's very hurt that his dad was so mean to him because he loved his dad. Dan quit playing hockey altogether. I think it crushed my dad because I think he lived his life vicariously through Dan and that's when things changed. He moved out shortly after that. I had a girlfriend, I got my driver's license and moved right out of the house. I wanted to be a police officer. That's what I went to school for. It was, I guess, a little bit of a dream, but I wasn't willing to commit the effort that went with it, so. I went and worked in a factory instead. And then we got pregnant. I was very excited because I knew that if I had a kid, I would not treat it the way that my dad treated me. I will do whatever it takes to make sure that kid has fun. He'd work all overtime to provide for the family. As far back as I can remember, Dan's always drank in high school, I mean, when he was young. But when Dan started a family of his own, it seemed like his drinking was in excess. It's always been in our lives, but I think it amplified as time went on. There was some red flags, excessive drinking on weekends. There would be beer flying, but he would slow down his drinking, so I wouldn't worry.
Dan was a good father. He was the dad that would get on the ground and play with the kids, go and kick a ball. Loved them, never shied away from changing a diaper. He was my perfect guy. Shortly after Jacob was born, Dan's father passed away unexpectedly in a car accident. He had a heart attack while he was driving and run into a tree and, and passed away. He didn't make it. I miss my dad like crazy. He was my best friend. They were friends and enemies. Even though his father was an alcoholic, he loved his dad. He lost the person that he did look up to for praise as little as it ever was. Dan just went right downhill from there. His drinking, there was no stopping at all. As long as his eyes were open, he was drinking. My mom tried to help Dan. I think she really struggled with Dan's alcoholism because she lived it with my dad. When it became too much for her to handle, she just pulled back. Dan didn't want to work. We were sinking financially, so he would drink more. He wasn't that caring, selfless person anymore. We had the average family, but behind the closed doors where nobody knew what was going on, like, nobody was happy. We moved up north and lived with my grandparents. I remember saying, bye, Dad, and he just looked at me and said, bye, buddy. We didn't see him, and he didn't reach out. It felt like our dad had died. For 10 years, he didn't see those kids, and I raised them by myself. If it wasn't for Dan Jr. going to see his dad, checking on his dad, we would have not known what was going on in his life. I decided to let my dad come live with me because he was living in a rooming house. It wasn't the best living situation for him. Dan Jr. felt compelled to take his dad in, simmer his drinking down with some rules and structure. When he finally moved in, it wasn't a week after. He had broken almost every single rule, drunk every day, smoking constantly in the house, letting my dogs out. You think you need more beer right now? I can handle some. You gonna clean my truck tomorrow? Um, I'll buy you some beers if you clean my truck. Is that fair? Yep. He needs it every morning now. When he runs out of beer, he won't talk to anybody. He's depressed, he's shaky. That's his body telling him, like, he needs to be drinking. I feel obligated to go out and buy him even just one or two beers to just kind of get him over that feeling. Bentley, come here, please. Bentley? Bentley. Oh, gosh, golly, Bentley. Bentley, I got to lock you in uh, before I go. Wow. That <laughs> felt like a charm. All I want is $20 to some uh... We've been enabling my dad for the past couple years. I want $20. That's all he wants. Go. <laughs> we do it just because he's very miserable when he doesn't have beer. That's all you get. Since he's lived with me, I've found myself becoming easily agitated, angry all the time, frustrated, stressed. I'm kind of just a loaded weapon at this point. Do you not use your brain? I use it all the time. No, get up. Um, gosh, golly. I was going upstairs, actually. Well, on go upstairs. Point. You're not drinking anymore, man. OK, then I'm going upstairs, and you Good. can Good. Get upstairs, because I've had it. I don't even want to see you for the rest of the night. You won't have to. I just want to start my own life. I don't want to have to come home from work, take care of my dad. Don't bully me. I'm not bullying you. I'm giving you rules. The rules have reversed. Dan is the child. Come on, Dad. Let's go upstairs. I just want to rest. Get upstairs. They're on the way. Just in the parking lot. Remember, breathe, breathe slowly. Be all right, bud. Hey, Dan. Oh, I've not met you. you My name's just... Andrew. Come on in. Andrew. How are you? Fine, thanks. Ah. See your old family's over there? Yeah. You coming to join us? No. No? 
Hold on, slow down, Dan. Uh... <laughs> Mind if I join you for one? No, no. A little freaked out to see your family there? I'm a little bit. I have a trust issue. Right. And when I was yeah. trying... Yeah, yeah, no, it... I hear you, I hear you. The idea would be you'd go back in, you're gonna hear your family, hear what they have to say, hear the love and the sadness in their voice. Like, that's what it's about. Yeah, I... Uh, no. As a dad, I know deep down in there, there's that dad in you still. Mm-hmm. It never left. It never left. Holy you're gonna hear some tough stuff when we go back in. All right, let's go. Let's go do this. Thanks for coming back. Oh, hey, holy jumping. So you see the whole gang's here. I do. Everyone is here because they love you. So everyone's going to read a letter. There'll be some tough I stuff understand. in there. I understand. All right. I watch you drink to the point of blackouts. I've seen you come home beat up, bruised up, messed up. All of the above have been witnessed by our three children affecting each one of them differently. I'm having to once again protect them from you, their father. Take the offer of help to my only dad. I'm here because I'm not ready to lose you. There's so much that I still need from you. You don't care about yourself anymore and you've lost everything because of alcohol. It makes me feel like we weren't good enough. If you choose not to take this out, I will cut all connection with you. I can't continue to hurt myself trying to help you. I miss the dad I remember when I was younger. You were always there for me. Now I feel that you and I have shifted roles. Now you rely on me for providing a safe place to live. If you do not accept the help offered today, I have no choice but to cut you from my life and no longer have you live with me. Are you willing to accept the help being offered to you today? Um. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> you willing to go right now? Yeah, like, I, I'm more, can you smoke in it? <laughs> you can't smoke in the plane, but you can smoke at the facility. Get to go on a plane. We're going to hit the road. My time at Lead Show has been uh, life-changing, to say the least. It is a really good feeling to actually be sober. I, I wake up in the morning and I'm not hungover. I'm not still drunk. I'm a happy person now. We've been waiting for this moment, and none of us could be happier. Ready? Caitlin, <gasps> how are you? <laughs> how are you doing? I haven't seen you guys forever. He just looks like a totally different man. Now he's like using full sentences, he can carry a conversation. His whole mentality's changed and it's all for the better. I'm looking forward to being a role model. I look forward to this new me and my relationship with him. Baby.